Now then, my friends, many of you will know me as the Mac Master. However, I've had lots and lots of comments over the last few weeks, well, months and years, saying, tell us a little bit more about yourself, Lee Alexander Davey. We want to know your background. Where are you from? What do you do? How did you end up being a YouTuber? And I thought, well, do you know what? Yeah, I'll do a little video on that. Probably won't be little because it's going to be my entire life. Uh, we're not going to do any editing on it. I'm going to nip to the barbers today. I'm going to take you with me. So we'll start off in the car. Uh, there'll be no fancy edits or fancy music. It's just going to be uh, about me, Lee Alexander Davy. So let's get in the car. Right, so let's start at the beginning then, shall we? So I uh, hope you're sitting comfortably and you've got yourself a nice cup of Yorkshire tea uh, or coffee or, a, I don't know, whatever you want, gin and tonic or a wine or whatever. Um, so we'll start at the beginning. So as I say, my name is Lee Alexander Davy. I was born on December the 25th, 1969 uh, at Kingsmill Hospital in Sutton in Ashfield. Uh, my mum and dad are Jack and Irene Davy. My mum was a seamstress and my dad uh, was a police officer uh, and also a police patrol car driver who actually was awarded one of the highest accolades uh, that you can get in the country uh, for driving, uh, for, for police driving. Now, when I was born, um, I actually uh, was christened in hospital, squeaky brakes, christened in hospital because um, I ended up having pneumonia uh, and they didn't think that I was going to make it through. So um, I was christened in hospital, but I pulled through uh, because I'm here, obviously. And uh, my dad said, I was there as a baby with my arms crossed. And he says, oh, I knew you'd make it. So uh, yeah, I, was, I, was, I was good. I was a tough little uh, fighter as a baby. Now then, um, what happened when I was a kid? The first recollection of me actually being dragged to school was uh, my mum taking me to um, nursery. That was my first recollection. And I was screaming and kicking. And it was in the days, back in the days when you didn't have to have a seatbelt on or whatever. And I was hiding in the uh, footwell at the back of the car thinking, oh, she won't find me. I don't want to go to nursery. And she dragged me out of nursery, screaming and kicking. I didn't want to go. Um, and then I, she ended up leaving me there. And I was, again, screaming and kicking at nursery. And she ended up picking me up. And uh, they said... The they couldn't keep me there uh, and my mum had to take me back at home. I was a little bit of a, yeah, a little bit of a, a handful, let's say. Um, and then I remember my mum taking me to my first school, which was, I think it was it, Bull Farm or something, I think it was, which is down on Ladybrook Estate in Mansfield. And um, again, I was kicking and screaming, didn't want to go. And uh, the first day, uh, that I was there. In fact, first of all, they had to take me back the first day. My mum had to take me home because I wouldn't stay. So um, when I eventually settled in, I remember having my first male teacher and I was that terrified of having a male teacher. I hid in the cloakroom behind a coat uh, for the whole lesson. And um, that was that. So that was my first sort of like nursery school or preschool or whatever it was that you call it then i went on to um a school called uh, cumberland's middle school because it was different back then you had middle schools and i don't know what you have now etc and I'd, i went to cumberland's middle school and um i wasn't the best of scholars no actually i'm missing a school out sorry i go back i went to savile house private school first which was um in Mansfield Woodhouse. I'm missing that school out. There we go. So I went to Savile House Private School, which was a total waste of money because I didn't really, I wasn't the best scholar. I didn't want to learn. I was, I just wanted to play and have fun, etc. So I was at um, Savile House School and uh, did elocution lessons there. And um, it was, it was, you know, I was dressed in the shorts and a cap and everything and a satchel and um i was there for about two or three years and i think my mum realized that it was an absolute waste of money uh putting me in a private school because it didn't work uh so then from there i went to cumberland's middle school which is in mansfield it was in mansfield it's now actually been knocked down uh, i think it was made of asbestos or something so they've knocked it down 
So I went to Cumberland's Middle School and um, again, I was an absolute nightmare at uh, school. The teachers, I used to make the teachers cry. I'm not proud of it, by the way. Uh, apart from one teacher I had, a, I had a lot of respect for called Mr. Webster, a Canadian guy. He used to grab you by your hair like that. But I really liked him for some reason. I, I, I took to him, it was great. And uh, then we had uh, a teacher called Miss Brotherhood as well. Now this is a bit, a bit strange because <laughs> things happened in, in, in the days back then and she used to, if you used to do anything wrong, you, you'd, she'd bring you to the front of the class and she'd put her hands in your pocket and feel around, basically, um, which is a, bit, a tad odd. I mean, you wouldn't be able to do that. You wouldn't get away with that now, let's put it that way. But she was a, oh, she was a character. She used to have glasses that pointed up like that, bright red lipstick, and she'd look at you like that. And that was Cumberland's Middle School. And I had a good mate there who uh, is called Richard Brown. In fact, he watches this, these videos. So I know you're watching, Richard. And I saw him the other day at Costa Coffee and he said, do you remember that time? He got his school report and um, on his report, he sent me a copy of it. I, I don't know where it is. Um, he sent me a copy of it and it said, Richard Brown would be an excellent scholar if it wasn't for the fact that he hung around with a certain person called Lee Alexander Davy. So I was a tad of a distraction, a bit of a distraction, I have to say. As I say, so that was Cumberland's Middle School. I wasn't the best scholar. In fact, I was an absolute nightmare. And uh, there was another teacher there as well called Mr. Bateman who used to pick on me all the time. In fact, Mr. Webster had a go at him for picking on me. He put me in the middle of, I probably deserved it, he put me in the middle of uh, the assembly room every lunch, made me get my dinner first um, so I could sit in the middle of the room on my own. Uh, I used to have like, I think he made like a little dunce hat or something and put it on me. You'd never get away with that now, would you? Um, well, I used to think, great, I get my dinner first. Um, and I got detention so many times at Cumberland's Middle School. I got it so many times that they had to wipe them off. And in the end, I actually got sent home from detention. They shouted just, Davy, get out, because I was such a distraction to the rest of the class. So I actually, I mean, that's quite an achievement, get sent home and banned from detention. So I ended up getting banned from detention. <clears throat> and I had the cane a few times and the T-square or whatever it was. Um, and I remember getting the cane on my hands. Uh, I mean, all that's finished now, hasn't it? Where's all that gone, the cane? And I remember saying to the head teacher who caned me, oh, I didn't hurt, and he'd do it again. And I said, didn't hurt. I was an absolute nightmare, honestly. Oh, terrible. Um, anyway, when, when I left Cumberland's Middle School, I then went to... Queen Elizabeth Boys School um, in on Chesterfield Road in Mansfield, which is now boys and girls, it's mixed, but it was a boys only school at the time. And again, I was not the best um, scholar. I just didn't want to learn. Um, and it was, I, I had Richard Brown, who was a friend of mine, as I've just said, I was on his report, a couple of other, couple of other uh, friends, but other than that, I was just an absolute nightmare. I wasn't a bully. I was just, I'm trying to think of the word, a little, you know, um, and I used to just disturb the rest of the class, etc. And um, I got sent out of class once because I remember the teacher saying, where does the electricity come from in clouds? And I put my hand up and I said, uh, oh, it, it, I sir, it comes from, um, uh, they're plugged into the mains. And again, Davy, get out. And uh, it was, I, I enjoyed school, but I, I just was a nightmare. And we ended up doing sports there as well. We had a pavilion and we had a certain teacher who it will remain nameless. And we had a pavilion where we had showers in and we'd get showered. And he'd stand there and watch. It was all a bit odd. It was a bit weird, weird times back then. And, um, that was uh, Queen Elizabeth's uh, boys' school. I left school. Um, I did take some exams. I can't remember what they were, CSEs or whatever. Um, but I, I didn't pass any. In fact, I just didn't even turn up for some. So I have no qualifications whatsoever. 
and um, that was it. I just left school. And my first job, um, let me get around here one second. My first job when I left school um, was working at Metal Box <clears throat> in Mansfield. I remember they used to make um, bins and uh, bread bins and things like that. And that was my first job <clears throat> that my dad got me um, through his mate, uh, Jack Tyler, who worked at Metal Box. And I was there for about, it was a part-time job. I didn't want to do it, but I did a, I did a good job. And um, so much so that the, I was, again, a little bit of a sod. And uh, I basically, these union guys came over to me because we had a break time. And I said, I'm just going to keep going, doing these bins and whatever, and doing the seams. And they was like, no, we've, we fought for this break. We fought for this break. And it's union rules. And I remember him saying, I'll oh, stuff the union or whatever. I'm, I'm just going to carry on doing it. Which was, I don't think the end. I don't think they quite liked that because they'd been there years, and I was just a, a little bit of a rebel. So I eventually left there. I, I didn't get kept. I didn't get kept on. Let's put it that way. So uh, I left there, and then did a few other interviews. I worked Etams, which was in Mansfield, which is bagging dresses up and pushing them around on rails. And I lasted a day there, and uh, and then I ended up. Um, saying they said don't come back uh which my mum was very upset with because she wanted me to have a job and i just wanted to um play with cameras and and videos and stuff because i was always into cameras and videos when i was a, a six seven year old little boy i was you know, playing with my dad's cine camera etc um and uh, that's where the video and the and the photographs uh came in um because when i was when I was at school, I was off ill from, I'm going back again now, but when I was at school at, I think, Queen Elizabeth, I was off ill for about a month or two um, with pains in my chest. And in fact, they were awful. I can't remember what it was. It must have been growing pains. But I, I, I kind of like borrowed, borrowed my dad's video camera. and I did, I did a stop animation of Blue Tech, a little bit like Morph on Take Heart when you was a kid. And I... I I'd got the, this character jumping up because I'd used glass, clear glass, to make him jump. And then he lassoed a vase or a vase if you're in the States, pulled that over, ate a rich tea biscuit. And my, it was my dad's pride and joy, this camera. And now I'm going back here, I'm going backwards and forwards, but I've just remembered it. And um, I showed him the video. I'm thinking he's gonna absolutely kill me for nicking his camera. And he says, who's done this? And I, I said, oh, I, I've done it. And he went, if you've done that, then you can have my video camera. So I started doing weddings then. I was, I think I did my first wedding at about nine or 10 year old or something like that, filming weddings. So anyway, we'll go back to where I was. I was back at, that's where all the cameras and stuff come in. So I was always obsessed with cameras and video, etc. cetera. Uh, and my dad always used to, be into cameras and he'd give me his I think I had his, had his he had him for about four weeks and then got another one and gave him to me it was an excuse for him to oh Lee needs a new one so um I'd get his his cast off which was only about four weeks old my first real camera was an Olympus trip which was um advertised by David Bailey um and that was the first one anyway I've gone back to there we all know I'm into cameras and computers etc I was obsessed with computers when I was um a teenager at school I had the ZX Spectrum the uh what's going on here uh Acorn Electron um Commodore 64 I had ever I was a bit of a spoiled little brat I have to say so I, I had every computer going I was obsessed with computers anyway um I'll go back to where I'd lost my job at ETAMS. I wanted to be a videographer and I wanted to film weddings and I wanted to be a more of a video guy than, than, a, than photos. I was always into video because I thought you can capture a moment on film, but you can capture the entire, uh, the entire not just a moment, you know what I mean. You can capture the entire memory on a video. You can relive it on a video, whereas a photograph just gives you one moment, one, one millisecond. So that's why I was always obsessed with video. 
And I said to my mum, I wanted to be a videographer, and my mum said to me, oh, no, you don't. You need a proper job. You need to get a proper job. That's not going to keep you. And I wanted to do the weddings, etc. Which came later, actually. I did have a wedding videography company. Um, and my mum said no, so she actually sent me for uh, an interview at the Chad newspaper, the Mansfield Chronicle Advertiser, because she was a seamstress, and one of her customers, her son, um, was one of the directors at the Mansfield Chad. So they sent me for an interview, and I got an interview with um, one of the managers there called Elaine Meakin. Massive smoker she was, she used to smoke all the time. And I sat in her office, I went for the interview, my mum and dad went to Marks and Spencers and got me a tie and a suit and made me look really smart. And um, so I got to the interview with Elaine Meakin, sat there, and I thought, I'm gonna fail this interview. I'm gonna show you mum, I'm gonna show everybody. Sat there and Elaine Meakin said to me, uh, so um, can you tell me why you want this job? And it was for uh, what was called an advocate clerk, which is, advocate was the clip art in books with uh, in, intention to train to be a graphic designer and she says why would you know this is going to lead to being a graphic designer why why do you want to be a graphic designer um i says well i don't really i, I want to be a videographer and she went all oh, right well can you tell me why you actually come to this interview then and uh, i started looking out the window at the lorries reversing, bringing all the newspapers in, etc. And um, she says, can I ask you what you're looking at? I said, yeah, I'm looking at the lorries out the window. She said, why are you looking at the lorries? I said, well, it's more interesting than this interview really, isn't it? And uh, I thought, I will fail this interview. Anyway, and she says, so you don't want to be a graphic designer? I says, no, nah, no, nah, not interested in that. She says, are you any good at drawing or graphic design? I said, no, nah, not, not really. I said, I'm all right, but not bothered. And um, she went, all oh, right, OK, then. Um, she says, well, what do you want to be? I said, I want to be a videographer or a photographer. I said, I'd go for that as, uh, you know, as a secondary thing. And, you know, is there any jobs as being a photographer? She says, no, there aren't. This is for a graphic designer. Anyway, the interview finished. I came out smelling of smoke and um, cigarette smoke. It's weird, isn't it, when you go back to the time and you can smoke at work and in pubs. Um, and a couple of days later, uh, a letter came through the door, Magpie, a letter came through the door and I picked the letter up, it said Mansfield Chad on the front and I smirked. Oh boy, did I smirk. I thought, yep, here we go. And mum went, oh, it's the Chad, it's the Chad, is it? I was like, yeah, open the letter up. And I thought, ha, and it went to, uh, uh, dear Mr. Lee Davey, um, after your interview the other day uh, with, for being an advocate clerk with uh, intent to be a graphic designer and trained to be a graphic designer I have pleasure in telling you uh, that you have got the position and I was absolutely gobsmacked I, I didn't understand it and um, I thought this can't be right I didn't want the job I did everything in my powers not to get that job I'm glad I did I'll tell you why in the end stick with me I hope you're enjoying this it's not eating food or fish and chips um, so I went for my first day uh, at the Mansfield Chad. It's going to get a little bit dark in a minute. We're going to go under some trees, but I'm going to keep going. Um, so I went for my first day at the Mansfield Chad uh, with my boss. Uh, I had to report to my boss, Paul Featherston, uh, who I'm still mates with. He's on my, I'm mean, friends with everybody who I worked with at the Chad. He's, he's on my Facebook still. And um, then I met all the other characters there as well. Andy and I think there was Richard as well, Richard Sands, who was my best man actually uh, at my at my wedding uh, with my ex-wife. So I met all them. Uh, Julie as well uh, was there, and Dave. Uh, there was a guy called Dave Osler there, and I, they all taught me basically how to design. And um, I had a fantastic time there, and I trained up to be a uh, a graphic designer. I did my first little advert, which was a, a three by one, they called it. It was three centimeters by one centimeter for a place called Anytime Cleaning Services. We had Letra set. I did all that. And, um, and then I did a double page spread design for Father's Day. And I remember Paul Featherston looking at it and he said, Have you done this? I said, Yeah. And he was like, Wow, this is brilliant. So I've got to show Elaine. Uh, Elaine Meekin, who interviewed me, and she was 
amazed and then I ended up working my way through let me just get out of here through the ranks at the Chad newspaper um and ended up working my way up to being studio manager at the uh, the newspaper there and uh, I had I was there seven years and I had the best time of my life I was originally on YTS the youth training scheme which I think was about was it 20 odd quid a week or something I think it was um, but I absolutely loved working there and um, I've, I've still really good mates with um, with uh, Andy and uh, Glenn who was, who was good mates of mine and um, it was fantastic I had uh, an amazing time there so that was my Chad days uh, I got my first proper girlfriend there as well who was a girl called Annette Coop her name was and uh, she was from Wales but she owned the local shop in Shirebrook or her dad owned the local shop in Shirebrook and I was absolutely head over heels in love with her and uh, that was my first real love I think and then I also met my ex-wife Sharon who I'm still very good friends with while I was there through uh, Elaine Meakin's secretary because Elaine Meakin's secretary who's not with us anymore uh, unfortunately um, was Sharon's best mate so um, I ended up meeting Sharon uh, through the Chad newspaper um, I also missed a bit as well because I, as I say I grew up in Mansfield but my mum also um, had a, a place up at the Lake District and um, I'm going back again now but my mum had a place up at the Lake District uh, of which we used to go up every weekend from when I was five year old she got it I used to go up every weekend and every summer holiday every Easter I spent a lot of my time growing up in the Lake District as well anyway I've, that's a bit I've missed I'm going I'm jumping here from little bits that I'm remembering so Mansfield Chad um, when I finished <clears throat> the Mansfield Chad which I said was fantastic I got offered a job just at the same time uh, as I got um, in fact at the Chad that was the first newspaper I'm missing an important part out here the Chad was the first newspaper, the first local newspaper in the UK, local newspaper, to use Apple Macintosh computers. And I was, after Paul Featherstone, my boss, I was given uh, the second person in the studio to use the Apple Macs. And I was a whiz with Apple Macs. I was immediately, because I loved computers. So you put creativity and computers together it was my dream, so I absolutely loved it. And that's where the Mac Master came from. I was always called the Mac Master because I was so good with Apple Macs. And we had the Macintosh SE at the time. Anyway, so that's where the Mac Master came from. Um, passed my driving test while I was there as well. My dad taught me how to drive. As I say, he was a police patrol car driver. Um, and um, my first car was a Nissan Micra and yes I was a spoilt little brat because my my mum and dad bought it me for my my 17th or 18th birthday I think it was um, and my dad said to me can you uh, take my car keys and go in the garage and get my camera bag out of the boot and they put the car in there so that was my first car Nissan Micra absolutely loved it I used to spend every Saturday cleaning it I was obsessed with that car it wasn't even a one litre car but it, it was brilliant I loved it it's you you know your first taste of freedom etc um, and uh, my mate Andy and Glyn used to come round when my mum and dad was up at the Lake District and we'd have Friday nights at my mum's house uh, in Mansfield we'd have pizzas etc they'd have a few beers I never drank till I was 23 didn't touch a drop of alcohol so um, absolutely adored it god the chad days were fantastic and we just got satellite as well and uh i'm jumping all over here but i'm trying to tell you a lot about myself and i was a bit of a whiz with satellites dishes as well and they'd come round and i'd reposition the satellite from the astra satellite to one of the scandinavian <laughs> satellites so you'd get you know your naughty game shows and stuff from holland or wherever but I, I forgot to move it back once and my dad was a bit 
miffed. He says, what's happened? I said, it was windy. It must have blown the satellite dish away uh, to a different position. And then we had BSB. I was obsessed with electrical stuff and computers. So that was the Chad days. Uh, I got married while I was at the Chad to Sharon. And, um, and within about two, three months, um, Sharon was pregnant with Paige, who's my eldest daughter, if you've seen us on some of the videos. Uh, we lived in Blidworth then, I moved to Blidworth, and um, we had Paige, and then a year later uh, we had uh, Caitlin, uh, who's my other daughter, who doesn't want to be on the videos. Um, she's not quite as flamboyant as, as Paige and a, and a, and a show-off. And um, at that time as well, I got offered a job at the Derby Evening Telegraph uh, over in Derby. And I, I was very much wrapped in cotton wool throughout my life with my mum and dad. And then I left my mum and dad's to go to live with Sharon and marry Sharon, who was very motherly and looked at, she was basically like another mother to me. Um, and I got offered a job at the Derby Telegraph and I was reluctant to take this job because I said, oh, I'm going to have to commute. It's miles away. It's miles away. It isn't really, is it? It's just I'd not been worldly wise. So I ended up taking the job. My mum says, you must take the job. It was more money. So I went over to the Derby Evening Telegraph and I spent two years at the Derby Evening Telegraph commuting from driving there from... Um, Blidworth to Derby every day and it was it was good it was a good two years and it was a good stepping stone and I met uh, a few people there as well that I still know actually very well uh, in fact Steve Lowe who's been on some of the vlogs um, if you've seen him where he went to the Hungrilla one I met him at the Derby Evening Telegraph he was um, he was started on the same day as me, actually. He started in the, in production, putting the news, putting the adverts together, and I was in studio. And um, he he ended up being a graphic designer as well. And uh, I I always I didn't train him, but he always it's copied, if you're watching Steve, he'll admit it. Copied my style and followed that, which I was, you know. I'm, I'm really proud of because he's a great guy and he's a fantastic designer and he's still a graphic designer so i ended up being at the derby telegraph for two years there um and then while i was there my mum bought me a i'm just watching the speed a an apple mac for a place called gordon harwoods in alfreton this was to be a turning point in my life because my mum had bought me this macintosh lc475 i think it was um, and she bought me this Apple Mac and I'd got it in the bedroom in Blidworth and I went around knocking on people's doors uh, Chinese restaurants um, takeaway places um, and I'd go in with a design for their menu because I'd nip in first pick up a menu redesign it type it all out spend hours doing it go back in and say how about this um, I can you know, I've redesigned your menu. Do you, do you want a thousand of these or whatever? And I'd quote them and I'd start taking up print broken, etc. So that took off and I was earning on that. I think I was earning 12 grand a year at the Derby Telegraph, but I was making something like 20 odd grand a year by doing these menus and design on the side. But my mum always gave me this stipulation of I, th I don't know whether she had a hundred percent faith in me or she was i think she did she did but she was always worried about me overly concerned and she wanted me to be safe because i, I love my mum bless her um and uh so i'll buy the mac but you must never do it full time you need a proper job uh so I never sort of like wanted to do it. I wanted to do it on my own, but I didn't dare anyway. A friend of mine, Nick Smith, who was a salesman from the uh, Chad, who was a good friend of mine, uh, saw what I was doing, and he said, uh, "Why aren't you doing this? Um, why aren't you doing this for yourself?" And I said, "Oh, you know, my mum uh, is worried about whether I'll make a wage because it's not a set wage." And he, his dad, who I'm very good friends with still, um, called me around and he said, "Listen." I will set you up, I'll set up a company 
Um, and you, I will pay you a wage, uh, what you're getting now, uh, including the, you know, what you're making f from your freelance stuff for an entire year, even if you do not make a penny. So I thought, all right, well, I'll do that. Then yeah, I'll go for that. So we set up a partnership together and we had a, we did about seven years in that company. And, um, uh, this is while I was at the Derby Telegraph. So I left the Derby Telegraph, but as I left the Derby Telegraph, I hope you're still with me. The Nottingham Post had the, uh, the, the company that owned it was Northcliffe had bought out the Nottingham Post and the MD, the deputy MD, sorry, uh, Carol, uh, who is a good friend of mine and he's been in Q, his name is in the, in the vlogs. He's been in my vlogs as well. <clears throat> um, said, I want you to come and work as studio manager uh, or studio director at the uh, Nottingham Post. And they offered me at the time, I mean, I must have been crazy, I guess, but it all happens for a reason. They offered me at the time something like, I think it was 50 grand a year uh, to work for them. And I was like, whoa. I said, I can't because I've literally just set up business uh, and a partnership with my friend. So I was loyal to, to, to um, Dennis and Nick, who'd uh, helped set me up. So they said, right, okay then, we'll employ you on a freelance basis through your company. Um, and I mean, they offered me an insane amount of money. It wasn't me that was getting it. It was the company that was getting it. Um, so I still got paid my wage and I got bonuses, etc. at the end of the year. So we did all right. We did good, but the, the, the I think they offered me something like five, thousand pound a week or something they offered the company um to freelance for me to freelance for them as a uh, to build their studio or so I had to go in i had to hire and fire people and change things around um and i had a great time at the nottingham post and while i worked at the nottingham post um i also did other i was allowed to do other freelance work as well i was allowed to do all their printing for them as well so i did all the printing for the nottingham post everything went through uh, the company that uh, myself and um, Nick and Dennis owned. So um, we did it exceptionally well. I think the turnover, I mean, I won't go into the turnover, but it was insane for the first year. So we did exceptionally well there. Um, and um, I think I, I had I had my first company car, which uh, Dennis got me, which was a Renault Laguna and then a Volvo S40 or something because I was into touring cars um, so that was the Nottingham Post and I was there for about I think I was there for about seven years as well um, and then I sort of like went I had to then hire a uh, somebody to replace me but I still went in doing the printing and doing freelance stuff for them uh, so that was the Nottingham Post and then we moved buildings etc and uh, I had a fantastic time at the Nottingham Post it was some of the the best uh, years of my life. Uh, at that point, uh, Sharon and I, while I was at the Nottingham Post, um, we we split up, still friends, <clears throat> and um, I then, uh, I had different cars, I was obsessed with cars. It all went to my, this is where, it all went to my head a little bit because um, whilst I was at the Nottingham Post, I split with my, partnership with uh, Nick and Dennis and I went on my own and set up Digitize which was my own company so I, re I left the partnership and I carried on doing freelance work for the Nottingham Post and I was doing exceptionally well and I was earning a lot of a lot of money at the time and it went to my head and I was too young really and that, as I say that's when my me and my wife, my ex-wife split up, although we're still, like I say, still very good, very good friends. Um, but it, it went to my head and it, it, it gave me a, a huge ego because I was buying a BMW M3s and BMW convertibles. I was ridiculous. I was going through a stupid point in my life, but you know, you have to go through these things, I guess, to realize that you're just a prat really. Um, so it gave me a massive ego and I was seeing uh, 
uh, other people as well uh, after I'd, um, uh, Sharon and I went our own ways I, I was started dating other people um, one of them I'm still very good friends with and she's an amazing amazing person um, she's now married um, and while I was there I then um, bought a place in America over in New York because I got to meet I was also doing freelance work as well as I said, sorry if I'm babbling, uh, but I worked for a place in Water Meadows, called Water Meadows in Mansfield, which is a swimming pool. And I met a very good friend of mine, uh, she's an amazing lady, uh, Ange, not Ange who's on my videos, but Ange, and a different Ange. And I met her brother who's Martin, the Silver Fox. So that's how I met Martin, for, through this uh, lady, and I went over to see Martin. Um, and I fell in love with New York, and I said I want to buy over here. Uh, and he told me to buy over in Hoboken. So I bought my place over in Hoboken. Uh, let me put a cup here. Um, and while I was in Hoboken, um, I was there t 12 years I had the place. I uh, dated a few people over there. Uh, a girl called Jennifer, who was a uh, very attractive girl. She's with somebody else now. She was a New Yorker um, from Queens and um come on go and uh, i had a fantastic time in america it was absolutely great but as i say i put on a lot of weight a lot of weight uh, while i was in america i was i've said before i was 22 23 stone and now i'm about 16 and a half <clears throat> and um america was a, a great time while i was in america i still kept flying back to the uk because i'd still got some business over there as well as in the states and um i went to a wedding over in kuala lumpur and uh an old let me back up here an old friend of mine um i went to his wedding who worked at the post uh and uh, i met up with his niece there uh, and immediately I was like, wow, smitten by her. And uh, that is Sarah, who's now my girlfriend. Um, I asked her out on a date and went out on a date. Then we had Harriet, who's my youngest, um, uh, my, not my youngest, now my youngest now is James, who is my eldest child with Sarah. That's right, I get that right. So that was Harriet. So we had Harriet. <clears throat> I was still commuting backwards and forwards to America um and sarah had come over as well and um and i just thought this is not working going backwards and forwards to america so i spent more time in the uk then and then we had james who's my uh young boy uh and i just thought i'll sell america we'll get rid of america etc um and i was still doing graphic design i was a graphic designer um but i'd started doing uh videos while I was in America for YouTube, I set up my YouTube account. I'll get, I'm going to go in and get my, my, I'm going to go in and get my, uh, haircut now, but then I'll come back in a minute. Um, and we'll carry on this, uh, we'll carry this on because, um, as I say, the, the American part, I started the YouTube channel, which is what we're doing, uh, now and how that became more and more of, of a, of a, of a full-time job really rather than the graphic design so um i'll see you in a minute right and we are back tell you what you know when you're getting old when your barber says do you want your eyebrows trimming and i haven't really got that many many eyebrows to be honest i haven't got much of an eyebrow i haven't got many eyebrows many eyebrows i don't really have anyway let's move on um so where was i um let me just get out of here here we go thank you very much one second Thank you. Um, so, Sarah, that's right. So, uh, I've got James and I've got Harriet. Uh, James is my youngest son. Um, and uh, so, I'm at the moment, I'm with uh, Sarah now, uh, who is my girlfriend. And uh, she lives up in Leeds. I've still got my office, which is at my ex-wife's. Is that camera level? Is that, there we go. Uh, I'm still at my um, ex-wife's where my office is. Very good friends. Uh, with my ex-wife Sharon however very soon now um, I'll be because it was only supposed to be a temporary measure I'll keep my office there very soon now I'll be moving out of there I'll be moving my office and uh, I'll also have a uh, a place of my own um, <clears throat> so that'll be happening very shortly 
uh, not in Mansfield, uh, many miles away from Mansfield. Uh, I'm going to keep that to myself though. So uh, I'll be going between there and my girlfriends and uh, and we'll be uh, going between each houses. So there we go. Um, now then, um, I missed a bit out actually filming weddings. So when I had my own company, which was Digitize, um, that did graphic design, corporate video, uh, and also I had a subsidiary of it as well, which was, it was set up as a different company. Uh, and I did wedding videos, and I did that with my ex-wife Sharon, and we used to film lots and lots of different wedding videos on a weekend. Uh, and then in the week, I'd still do the graphic design, but I'd also do corporate video, and I did a lot of corporate video for the newspapers. So I worked for the Leicester Mercury, I worked for the Derby Telegraph, I worked for the Nottingham Post, and I worked for the Birmingham Post as well, doing their food and drink awards. Um, and this is, I'd come back from America while I was doing this, so um, this was, well, I was with Sarah, we'd just had Harriet, um, and I think Harriet was about three, she's ten now, three or four, she's ten now, and I'd come back and I'd do all the corporate video work for the food and drink awards. And that's when I set up YouTube, um, and I, my first video was in my apartment in New in Hoboken in New Jersey. Um, and I set that up just as a little bit of a hobby and I thought, oh, I'll just, I'll, I'll just do YouTube because I, I watched a guy called Casey Neistat, who's my YouTube hero, thought he was great and I thought I could do that. And, um, started doing videos on, uh, on YouTube. I was very, if you look back, I was very, very shy um while well, i was filming these videos because i had a lot of experience of filming the videos you know i was great at doing that because i was doing corporate videos and i had all the equipment and i got the skill to film it but very little knowledge in being in front or very little experience of being in front of the camera and at first it was daunting because you'd got people looking at you literally laughing while you're talking to a camera and you think, oh, it's embarrassing, I, I, I don't know I can do this. And I was really embarrassed at the time. I thought, oh, people are looking at me, they're laughing at me. And now I don't really care. I just think, well, it's a job, I'm not bothered. And I think because social media has got more, it's pre prevalent, the word that I want to use, it's, it's more, it's everybody's doing it now aren't they they're all TikToking or whatever nobody really looks at you anyway i think i had somebody in hoboken laugh at me the other week and i just thought whatever get on with it it's a job pays the bills um so i got into that and my first um i was doing food review videos actually years and years ago before a lot of other youtubers because my first video had got fish and chips in it over in uh, brooklyn and um, that place has gone now and i enjoyed doing it so much and then lockdown hit and it really sort of like crippled my design business i was doing web design as well and graphic design and all the corporate videos for the food and drink awards women in business awards environmental awards for all the different newspapers and that all went because of lockdown and i carried on I really put my everything into doing YouTube then. I thought, right, well, I'll go, I'll go real, I'll go balls out into YouTube. And um, started doing lots and lots of videos. I'd already done one in Tenerife um, with my girlfriend prior to lockdown. And it did really well. And I thought, oh, there's something, you know, something here. So I went back to Tenerife in lockdown, which many of you will know and started doing lots more videos from Tenerife and it really, really hit off. So that's where YouTube then really started going, you know, well for me, uh, doing the Tenerife videos. Um, a lot of people uh, and a lot of viewers still enjoy the Tenerife videos. I think now personally, I'll go back now and again to Tenerife, but I personally think I've done everything that is possible that you can do in Tenerife. I've gone to Benidorm as well, uh, two or three times. I think I've got a couple more visits there to doing Benidorm, but there's lots of other places to explore. I'm staying in England for the foreseeable future for the next two or three months, um, because it's summer here, I'm taking a bit of a break, I'm spending a lot more time with my family, uh, even though I'm still putting videos out, it's a lot 
I could still get to see my family a lot more while I'm here in the UK. Um, so that's where YouTube came in really. It was when the lockdown hit and the design and the corporate video business finished. Um, YouTube really took off, so I'm really thankful to YouTube and uh, all of my viewers, all of all of my viewers out there who I call my friends. Um, you know, I'm really, really thankful to YouTube for that. Um, as I've said, I mean, I've, I've uploaded daily, but I've said, um, you know, I probably won't upload on a few days now. I've, I have done in the last few days. However, I think I missed a day yesterday where I didn't upload a video and it i just think oh whatever now you know i'm a lot more relaxed with it and i'm really really enjoying what i'm doing so um for now i'm enjoying youtube uh got a lot of things happening as i say i'm moving uh very soon um moving my office and moving uh uh my house etc so but i will be keeping that private really i want to keep that to myself where i'm moving to it's quite a fair way away um so um and uh, i'm going to be spending time there with uh, with my family uh, in between leeds and uh, and my house so uh, i'm looking forward to that new chapter um and um and then sharon can have her um uh, my office back as a as another room uh, and also i've got like a spare room there as well where she lets me stay over from working late. She's been brilliant, Sharon has, and uh, we will continue to stay friends as well. So um, it's good if you can carry on staying friends uh, with people, uh, and especially your exes as well. So there we have it. In fact, I'm friends with all my exes, actually. Um, so I must be doing something right, I guess. So that is a little bit more about me. I don't think I've missed anything. I'm trying to think. I don't think I've missed that. If I have missed anything, then uh, I do apologise. Um, but work-wise and school-wise, yeah, I was not a very good scholar. I left with no qualifications. Um, but as I, I do have, you know, a, a talent for design and, uh, and, and creativity. So... Um, you know, I'll say to people that have left school uh, and they don't have qualifications, um, but they do have a dream, follow your dreams because, you know, I think if you work hard at anything, if you want something really badly and you work hard at it, then you'll get it. Um, so there we go. And, uh, and learn along the way as well. well. We all make mistakes. I've made many mistakes and I have learnt from them thankfully enough um, as I say a lot of people on YouTube have massive massive egos it really does change a lot of people on YouTube and I've seen it with people and it's um, oh, please is it it's it's um, it's sad really because they think because they're on YouTube they become a they think they're famous and they're a star and and it really goes to the head. Well, with me, because I've, I went through that when I set up Digitize when I was 20, 27, I think I was. And I was a complete idiot. I mean, I'll use my dad's phrase. What a prat. I was a complete prat thinking I was it. And, and then it hits you and you grow out of it. And you think, you know, you know, you know better than anybody else. And, uh, it's nice and I always somebody mentioned this in one of the comments and I agree with it and they said their dad said it to them and they said they said treat people how you expect to be treat yourself and um, somebody mentioned that in the comments and that's what my dad said to me and I agree with it so there we go that's me Lee Alexander Davy otherwise known as the Mac master but um, the Mac Master, there's a lot of there's a lot of character in the Mac Master where it's not really me. You know, I think a lot of people, you have a lot of keyboard warriors commenting on the Mac Master, etc. The character that I portray on YouTube, um, but the reality is, there's a real person behind the mask, and it's me, Lee Alexander Davy. I am. A guy who was a businessman who ended up doing YouTube. Um, 
and and that's it you know just a just a guy with a phone on a stick from Mansfield uh, so there we go anyway I hope that gave you a little insight into who I am um, I don't I do like fish and chips I think that there is a there is a few things that the Mac Master uh, does that uh, is a little bit like me however I don't eat them all the time um, you know off camera I eat very healthily and uh, I also will say before I finish this video off a lot of people say oh you never ever with your girlfriend or your family however it's all the magic in the movies because as I've said before I could go to a place and I could film two three vlogs in a day so I may be away somewhere abroad for a week and it may look like I'm away for two or three weeks but I'm not I'm back at home editing uh, so there we go and I'm now off uh, up to Leeds because I'm going to go and take Harriet swimming so I'm looking forward to that and um, I filmed this on the Friday by the way you're watching this on the Sunday so I hope you've all had a great weekend it's supposed to be good weather I'm off to um, the uh, Farsley show uh, in Leeds with my family I'm looking forward to that and uh, I won't be so this weekend you see you'll be watching this it's a Friday and from now I won't be picking up a camera I won't be doing any work and I'll be spending time with my, my family so uh, and I think that's really what life's about is family and friends that's all from me today I hope you enjoyed this little insight into who I am and uh, I hope that you enjoyed the video if you did please give it a thumbs up I do really really appreciate uh, everybody who watches the channel uh, and also comments as well so please leave your comments in the comment section down below have a wonderful Sunday evening and I'll see you guys in the next one don't forget give us a thumbs up and um, it just helps to push the video out to YouTube and if you if you've dropped in on this video for some strange reason and well you won't be wondering who I am because I've just told you maybe hit the subscribe button and um, join us on the journey with the Mac Master thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one bye bye don't worry, I can see without my glasses. <laughs> see you later. Bye-bye.